cosy autumnal setup uh, for today's episode of the podcast. Um, my name is Jessica and I knit mainly uh, in my life, <laughs> um, or mainly in my life such that I talk about it on this podcast. Um, I'm also training to be an English teacher, I live in Edinburgh um, and I have a cat called Graham. Uh, who will not be making an appearance in today's podcast because the door to this room is closed. <laughs> um, I wanted to film today, um, but I don't have loads to talk about. Um, I actually only have two projects on the go, three projects on the go. Maybe I'll talk about the third one. I didn't want to talk about it last week, but maybe I'll bring it out just to kind of fill it in. I don't have any finished objects uh, compared to last week when I think I had five finished objects. I had a real finishing flurry um, and I remember saying at the end of last week's episode, oh no I've only got like one project on the go and I think potentially even before I uploaded that episode um, I cast on a new project so maybe I'll start with that one. I'm just putting my water down here yeah, and not give up on any of my candles. Um, I've written down what this project is called because I would otherwise forget. Um, but this is, this first project is called Berta um, and it's a shawl and it's by Amy Christoffers and I found it through um, Lindsay at A Wooden Nest who had knit this shawl I think she's not doing like podcast episodes per se anymore rather kind of vlogs that like also include elements of knitting which is really nice um, and in one of those vlogs she talked about writing about writing about making this shawl and I was so transfixed by it because it's a garter shawl but with lace elements and I'd never seen something that was both garter stitch and lace so I'm going to show you the shawl here, um, but I'm knitting it with, if you've watched my um, What's in My Stash video, you'll have seen that I had two big skeins of um, kind of a mixed tweedy wool that I got um, on the Isle of Harris um, and just didn't know what to do with. And as soon as I saw this shawl, I was like, I know these two marry together. Um, so this is how much I've done so far. So I'm quite far into it. Um, I'm almost at the end of my first ball and I've got another ball of about the same size. I honestly wasn't sure if I'd have kind of the right amount because I'm I'm not using, you know, I had no ball band for this ball of yarn. It was just kind of like a big ball that I got from trying to shop for like a pound. So I like don't know how much is in there. I could have weighed it um, and maybe kind of guesstimated but you know what? That's no fun. What's more fun is playing yarn chicken forever and ever. Um, and also with the shawl it's really flexible so you can just kind of keep going until you run out and then uh, cast off. Or at least with this shawl it is. It's like a, a, tri a triangular construction. So you start it kind of up here with a little garter tab and then you cast on uh, across it and kind of move out this way and out this way. Um, along the middle doing these little garter squares they are so like I just think it's so beautiful and it's such a good fit for this yarn because it really shows its texture um, but also it's not overwhelming I think I didn't want to do something with this ball that felt too heavy because it's quite a thick um, I'd say it's about a DK. I'm using five millimeter needles when I think the pattern suggests that you do it with kind of lace weight in like 3.5 or something like that. Um, I'm not actually 100% sure on that, but I'm just using what felt like the right size for this. I did test a like 5.5 and a 6, but a 5 seemed right, and I'm really happy with how the texture is coming out because I tried to make some things with it before and it was just a bit dense it was really dense and I didn't like the fabric and it's like it's very rough and it seems it's quite lan lanolin-y like it's quite greasy 
um, so there's a lot of like texture going on already so you don't want kind of the pattern to be creating too much more texture if that makes sense um, you know like I think I was doing a ribbon with it before and that was just like it was too much uh, so yeah I just I cast this on last week so I've made quite a bit of progress I don't usually knit with this sort of weight of yarn or use needles that are this size so having a project like move along this quickly is um, really satisfying. It's a really simple lace pattern and I kind of had no problem memorising it so it's been a good one to use kind of while I'm listening to lectures or if I'm doing readings on my computer um, I can kind of do it mostly without looking or without looking too much um, and it's nice to have a project to kind of shake up from my other work in progress um, which I'll come to which is a just kind of plain stockinette uh, project which is my kind of intended lecture listening uh, project. Lindsay at A Wooden Nest did a tassel along the side which I thought was really nice and I've never done a tassel on a shawl before. I don't think I've ever done a, I haven't done a tassel on anything since doing kind of light tasseling on like a garter, sk garter stitch scarf. That's hard to say, garter stitch scarf um, when I was like 10 years old. So that will be really fun. I'm hoping I have enough leftover to do that. So yeah. Um, really enjoying this, hoping to have it finished and I've been enjoying like seeing it with kind of my clothes as I'm knitting and I think that the colours in here are really going to complement my winter wardrobe. Uh, so that's exciting. Yeah. Berta Shawl, big fan. My other work in progress, which I think I showed you a little bit of last week, like I just finished maybe like a few inches after the cuff, is my scrappy sock tube. Um, which I've been ploughing on with. I think it's one of those ones where it's almost like with the self-striping yarn when you're just like so excited to like get to the next colour and like you're just like oh I'll just knit till I get to this colour or I'll just knit till I get to this colour band um, but with kind of longer patches and like I'm really enjoying seeing how it's coming on so I'll get it I'll show it to you. Um, just checking I've not got there you go Here's the third needle, we'll keep that safe, put it there. Um, but this is uh, how much how much progress I've made so far. Um, I'd say maybe we're kind of at the end of sock one, <laughs> maybe moving our way on to sock two. Um, but I don't know, I've got about this much kind of left, um, which feels like a little under half maybe. Um, yeah, so I've gone through kind of a fair bit of colours. This was a bit of Jameson's and this was a bit of something that I'm not quite sure what it was, but it's very, very soft. Um, and then this was some Rowan Spun full ply, um, which has kind of appeared a few times. And then I'm also using some Rowan Tweed, uh, which is knitting up quite tightly because I'm using 2.25 needles um, and I'd say it's like more of a sport weight than a four ply. It's definitely like thicker than uh, some of the other ones that I'm using but again this is all kind of bits and pieces that I don't like have the ball band for really like no loads of information other than what I can remember. Um, about so it's interesting to see how they're all working out it's not been kind of going in and out at all uh, so that's good I think that I have selected mainly similar weight um, yarns what I've really enjoyed about the kind of colours progressing on this is that um, I had a ball of like red Jameson four ply uh, that was like left over from a fair Isle project um, and the moths had gotten it, which meant that as I was kind of pulling it, um, it was a moth infestation from a very long time ago, so it's all dealt with, and like, I don't think anything else is, you know, it was many, many years ago, but I still had this ball of yarn that, you know, had been moth treated or whatever, um, but it still had the holes in it. So as I was pulling, I'd kind of get like a strand, and then there'd be a cut, and then there'd be 
a kind of longer strand than another cut. So it meant that I put it in lots of different places along the ball. So it's like here and here, and then there's like a longer stretch of it here, and then a little bit here. And I think there's one more bit of red to come, but that's it. Um, but even if you <laughs> if you're thinking about doing a scrappy sock tube, I would recommend maybe doing that with kind of one key colour because I think it's really working to like tie all of the disparate colours together, especially as it's like quite a pop of colour uh, compared to the other ones are quite like blues and greys and kind of more like earthy tones and then having this red pop up every so often is really good. So that is a bit of a gift from the moths really. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I've been enjoying it. and I'm, I mean, I'm sailing through it. I like did not think that I would be this far in a kind of week out from when I last spoke to you, but I've been doing a lot of online learning and uh, when I'm not taking notes, it does really help for me to kind of have something in my hands. So yeah, I'm just gonna keep kind of plowing on with this and I'll let you know when I get kind of to the other end and maybe do I don't know if I could do a tutorial, I don't know if I'm quite that advanced, but perhaps at least record some footage of me uh, adding in the toes and the afterthought heels and that sort of stuff if anyone would be interested. Um, because I have never done it before um, and I'm just interested to see how it would work so I'm sure some of you would be interested too. Now my secret third project, um, which I alluded to last week, uh, is another sock project and it is one that I did show in my first episode where I kind of talked through um, my knitting basket and it is a small sock um, which is three by one, well it's one by one rib then three by one rib and then it just kind of has a classic uh, short row heel uh, in a contrasting colour and then it goes down and it's got the same contrasting colour on the toe and this is one that I stopped because I did not, it was a scraps project and I thought I would have enough for two socks and I did not have enough for two socks. Um, so I'm only like a few inches into the uh, second sock um, with not much yarn left. Um, but while I was making up my little scrappy sock ball, I found this colour, which is a Jameson's four ply, kind of like, what would I call this? Mm, like a greeny, like a creamy green, uh, like a sea green, like a very light sea green. And I think it will go quite well with the colours that I have in this sock, so I think I'm going to incorporate it somehow to hopefully bulk it out and be able to complete the second sock. Um, and then whatever is left over I will put on the end of my scrappy sock project which I think will help motivate me to finish this sock in order to finish the scrappy sock project and then all of my sock scraps will be used up. So that is a project that I think will come back into circulation while it's been uh, benched for a while. Um, but that is, that is that. That is that one. <laughs> um, So not loads to share today, but I thought I'd just check in and say hello, just because I'm enjoying it so much. Um, <laughs> I'm enjoying sharing uh, this time with you. Thank you all so much for watching um, and for interacting with me. I really liked hearing kind of what, how many projects you've all got going on at the moment. This week, I would like to know um, if any of you are still listening at the end what project you want to cast on that haven't yet what's the like pattern that you're eyeing up that you're like I want to start this but something's holding you back what's that dream project for you um, and I'll have a think and see what mine is because at the moment I'm actually pretty satisfied with what I've got going on but usually I'm like I want to cast on this or I want to cast on this or I want to cast on this I'm very like goo, 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 goo. Uh, so I will also have a think about that and let you all know in the comments and you let me know in the comments and we'll have a little chat um 
I've got to go because my battery is flashing at me and I'm meeting some people for a little crafty hang in the park this afternoon and I'm meeting some fellow Edinburgh crafties so hello any Edinburgh crafties if you're watching so I've uh, got to decide which project I'm gonna take uh, to the park and what I'm gonna work on with my fellow Edinburgh crafties um, if you live in Edinburgh and would be interested in crafting with us uh, send me a message on Instagram and I'd be happy to add you to our little uh, chat group uh, we're just trying to arrange kind of meetings every so often to hang out and craft um, and it would be lovely to see some of you so hope you have a lovely weekend um, like this video if you liked it and subscribe if you want to see more um, and thank you so much for watching